Um, but number four is physical intimacy. You know, I guess this is not is always a touchy topic in church because it is a private thing. But you know, I, I think we don't hear about it enough in churches because it is a bit of a taboo topic. But you know, God did create the relationship between a man and a woman. He created it for a reason. And you know, we ought to have a physical relationship with our husband or our wife because it will actually improve your marriage. Um, look here in verse uh, one. We'll read here in First Corinthians chapter seven. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. So, you know, I take that verse. That's why I don't think it's right for unmarried couples to, to hug and to touch and to kiss and things like that because it's good for a man not to touch a woman. And you might think in the Bible, well, what about the Bible when it says, oh, you know, holy kiss, you know, greet the brethren with a holy kiss. You know, I honestly think that's, that's men, you know, because it's like, I mean, I don't do that. Um, but, you know, I, I think in some cultures, you know, like Italian culture, even Mexican culture, you know, men will greet each other with a kiss on the cheek, things like that. I don't think it's about kissing women on the cheek because I know in some cultures, you know, even in my wife's culture, you know, men will kiss women on the cheek to greet them and things like that. I personally don't think it's the right thing to do just because the Bible says that it's good for a man not to touch a woman. It's better just to, 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 to refrain from it. Um, but that's just my opinion. You know. Number two, uh, verse two. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So you see here that the whole idea of having a relationship with your wife or with your husband is to avoid adultery, to avoid fornication. And just going back to the topic of service, this is one way that you can serve your husband or your wife is to fulfill that desire that we all have so that they don't, they're not tempted to fornicate, they're not tempted to lust, they're not tempted so much to commit adultery. Look here, verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So see, it's your duty um, as a husband or a wife to render this due benevolence in the bedroom to your husband or your wife. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. So we talked about the role of a husband and wife, you know, the husband having authority over the wife. But when it comes to the issue of a physical relationship with your husband and your wife, you're actually on equal par. You have authority one over the other. So if the husband demands it of the wife, she's obligated to to serve him in that way. And same with the, the, um, the husband. If the wife demands it of him, she, uh, he is um, obligated to serve her in that way. Verse 5, Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. See, if you deny your husband or your wife physical intimacy, you are sinning. It says here, defraud ye not one the other. You are doing them wrong. And it's more, I guess it's more common amongst women than it is amongst men. But, you know, women who have the frame of mind of, you know, oh no, you know, when, when uh, obviously your husband is, is requesting it of you, I believe that is a sin. That is wrong to do. You should be fulfilling that desire in him because otherwise he might fulfill it somewhere else. You know, you, you, you have the power you know, men, husband and wives, they have the power to help their husband or their wife in this area not to be tempted to commit fornication and adultery. Now, having a physical relationship with your, with your husband or your wife. Now, one thing we can get glean from this, um, this passage is have a physical relation, relationship often. Because it says here in verse 5, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent. So there's the consent, right? Um, that it, it, you have to, it, a person has to allow, you, you have to uh, um, be allowed to abstain from having that physical relationship um, with your husband or wife. For a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. So the only reason why you really should be abstaining from one another, you shouldn't be using it as blackmail against your, your husband if you've had a strife or things like that. And in fact, you know, sleeping together is one, sometimes the best way to settle the strife, right? And, and come back and show your love one to each other. But the only reason why you should be abstaining from this physical relationship is that you're fasting and praying. 
And you know, you don't fast and pray for months and months and months on end. So that's why you should be coming together frequently. You should be coming together often. And even if you're taking a break from this physical relationship for fasting and prayer, the Bible says it has to be done with consent. So a woman can't fast and prayer to abstain from the physical relationship if she doesn't have consent from her husband and neither can a husband fast and pray um, without consent from, from the wife. You know, it's funny, this passage, just going back to that mindset of serving. Because, you know, teenage boys, right? They, or young boys, not even teenage boys, maybe boys in their 20s. Any boys, really. Any unmarried boys. <laughs> they'll, they'll read this passage, right? And I'm sure you guys had the same, same thought when I read this passage. You're kind of like, ah, you know, my wife is going to have to serve me in this area. And, you know, it, it, this is an ungodly way of thinking of it. You know, I'm not saying that this is not you know, a thought that, that is natural for a man to have. But this is not how we should be thinking of this passage because remember, now you're looking at God's word and you're applying it to another party, aren't you? You're, you're looking at God's word and you're thinking, ah, you know, this is what my wife owes to me. This is, this is how my wife is going to be able to serve me. And you're thinking about how this benefits you and serves you. Rather than looking at this passage and seeing that you have a responsibility to your wife, and seeing it from a perspective of service and saying, hey, yes, my wife has an obligation to me, but I also have an obligation to my wife. I have an obligation to serve my wife in this area and fulfill her desires and, you know, do that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, there are two ways that you can think of this passage. You can see it as self-serving, which is what a lot of guys do, um, but you can see it as a way that you can serve your wife. And it, you know, it might be funny, but you know, it does happen, guys, that you, know, that you will be in a situation. It may, may not happen as frequently the other way around because more frequently it's the, the guy that is more driven by his lust and by his desires. So more often than not, you'll probably be in a situation where the husband is demanding it and the wife doesn't want to serve him in that way. But there, there, believe it or not, there are times where your wife will desire that physical intimacy and you don't feel like it. And this is where you need to step up and fulfill your obligation and fulfill that desire that she has. We are commanded by God to do that. So let's just see if I've covered all these points. So have the right attitude about physical intimacy. It's not about fulfilling your desires. It's about fulfilling the desire of your wife or your husband. Um, and you know, you know, Jesus saying it's more blessed to give than to receive, you know, it applies in this area as well. And, you know, it's interesting that, you know, I think you will enjoy your relationship with your wife a lot more if you have this mindset. You will enjoy the bedroom a lot more if it is about serving. Because that's the thing about having a good marriage. If you have this mindset of serving and doing what is right for your spouse, you'll enjoy everything a lot better. You'll enjoy your time together. Your home will be a lot better. When you go out, it'll be a lot better. When you go on holiday together, it'll be a lot better if you're always looking out for the other person. 